It's the moment we've all been waiting for. A brand new, game-changing, blazingly fast JavaScript framework just hit the timeline. Yesterday, ByteDance, the company that gave the world the gift of social media crack via TikTok, gave the world another gift in the form of an open-source, multi-platform app development framework called Lynx. Developers can throw fossilized relics like React Native and Flutter in the garbage, and rewrite their native mobile apps from scratch with shiny new Rust-based tooling and a high-performance, dual-threaded UI rendering engine. Like React Native, it empowers web developers to build shoddy iOS and Android apps with JavaScript, but Lynx claims to achieve smoother, pixel-perfect UIs and faster launch times compared to other cross-platform tools. That's a big claim, and in today's video we'll try out Lynx and find out if it's a legit React Native killer. It is March 6, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Lynx is not just another half-baked GitHub project written by a 19-year-old on prescription amphetamines. It's not the terminal browser with the same name, but rather a production-ready framework that's already in use in high-traffic apps at TikTok. It doesn't power the main TikTok app where you would post your cringe dance videos, but it does power the search panel, TikTok Studio, and a bunch of other ancillary apps. I find this very interesting because ByteDance was one of the early adopters of Flutter and is still on the Flutter showcase today. In addition, if they wanted to use web technologies to build mobile apps, why not just use something like React Native, Ionic, or NativeScript instead of reinventing the wheel? Well, the unspoken reason is that creating new frameworks gives us developers job security, but the official reason in their blog post is mostly about performance. Performance? Throughout history, many people have criticized React Native for not feeling truly native, and that's because it relies on a single-threaded JavaScript bridge that allows JavaScript code to communicate with native code like Swift on iOS or Kotlin on Android. But that single-threaded bridge is a big bottleneck that can create performance issues. Are you saying there's something wrong with my gear? So what you're saying to me? The React Native team has addressed this by building a custom engine called Hermes and released the Fabric Renderer a few years ago, which some have called the new and improved bridge or a bridgeless architecture. But ByteDance has taken a different approach with Lynx using a dual-threaded architecture, where user code and framework code are split into two distinct runtimes. The main thread is powered by PrimJS, which itself is built on QuickJS, which is a tiny 210 kilobyte JavaScript engine. Its job is to handle synchronous UI tasks like event handling, while user code runs on a separate thread, which means the crappy, inefficient code you write won't block the main thread and degrade performance, and the end result is instant first frame rendering for the end user. Or in other words, no blank screens. That's pretty cool, but what's even more awesome is that this engine is framework agnostic. You don't have to use React and could build your app in Svelte, Vue, or whatever framework you want. In addition, it supports actual native CSS features for styling, like transition animations, variables, gradients, and so on. And that's a lot more intuitive for web developers. The major problem, though, is that there's virtually no ecosystem around this framework. There's no expo tooling to solve all your problems, and there's no massive widget library like you have in Flutter. That being said, let's go ahead and try it out to find out if it has any potential. When you generate a project, the first thing you'll notice is that it uses RSPack, which is a Rust-based module bundler that's supposedly even faster than V. That'll generate a starter template in TypeScript, and if we look at the code, it looks like a basic React.js project where the UI is represented with HTML and CSS. But if we take a closer look at the markup, up, you'll notice we're using non-standard elements like view, text, and image. These look like HTML tags, but they actually correspond to native elements on different platforms, like view is UI view in iOS or view group in Android, but would translate to a div on the web. And what's especially awesome here is that we can use regular CSS or even Tailwind to style these elements, which is something you can't really do in React Native, although you could use tools like Native Wind. But now let's go ahead and run it. The easiest way to run it on mobile is to use the Lynx Explorer app, which which allows you to live preview it on your phone. But when I tried to compile it on Windows, I immediately got an error. So I tried to switch to the Windows subsystem for Linux, and while it compiled, I could never actually get it to run on the Explorer app. So finally, I had to dust off my old MacBook, and everything seemed to work a lot smoother on Mac OS. And as you can see here, when I make changes to my code locally, it'll automatically re-render the demo on my phone. Impressive, very nice, I think Lynx has a lot of potential. And that's bad news, because it means I need to rewrite all my code with this shiny new object. At least I can review all that code automatically thanks to CodeRabbit, the sponsor of today's video, an AI co-pilot for code reviews that gives you instant feedback on every pull request. Unlike basic linters, it understands your entire code base, so it can catch more subtle issues like bad code style or missing test coverage. Then it will suggest simple one-click fixes to help you get things cleaned up quickly. CodeRabbit keeps learning from your PRs over time, so the more you use it, the smarter it gets. It's 100% free for open source projects, but you can get one month free for your team using the code Fire with the link below. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.